Hi everybody, I'm Janani. I'm Shanda. And I'm Austin. Today our presentation is about how to maximize the efficiency of energy around a photovoltaic thermal solar panel. First, let's see why is solar energy important. The solar energy is an environmentally friendly from form of energy production once the initial system are created and installed. And having a diverse collection of energy sources makes public infrastructure more secure, can lower cost and prompts innovation in various industries. The solar panels take in ultraviolet light and convert it into electrical energy, yet the panels retain a lot of heat as a byproduct. The heat produced by this could be utilized and placed into storage, allowing more energy to be collected with about the same amount of work being done. This would allow less heat in the surrounding of the panel and the creation of more energy that is available to the public. The solar panels exposed to the sunlight generate heat and electricity. A normal commercial photovoltaic module operating at its maximum power point only 15% to 20% of the incident sunlight is converted to, into electricity with most of retaining energy being converted into heat. There are three types of solar panels, which are photovoltaic solar panels, solar thermal panel, and photovoltaic thermal solar panels. First, Photovoltaic solar cells can be made from either monocrystalline or polycrystalline material and consist of several layers. The semiconductors in the middle of the layers are really important. The top semiconductor is a negative layer and the bottom semiconductor is a positive layer. When sunlight hits the top semiconductor layer, the electrons become excited and attracted to the positive semiconductor layer. As conductors on both layers force the electrons to travel around the cell, it will create an electrical current. Next, the solar thermal panel. The solar thermal panels or solar collectors are devices that are mounted on the roof to absorb the sun's heat and use it to heat up water storage in a cylinder. The liquid flowing through the panels is a mix of water and antifreeze. The main purpose of this technology are space and water heating and they are very popular solution for swimming pools heating. The thermal panels are more efficient than the PV panels because heat waves carry more energy than sunlight. The metal plate is painted a dark color to maximize the absorption of sunlight. The photovoltaic thermal solar collectors, which are also known as hybrid solar collectors, combined photovoltaic solar cells, which convert sunlight to electricity, with the solar thermal collectors, which transfers the otherwise unused waste heat from the PV module module to the heat transfer liquid. By combining the electricity and the heat generation within the same component, these technologies can reach a higher overall efficiency than the solar photovoltaic or the solar thermal alone. How we maximize the efficiency of the PVT model is with one being the heat exchanger orientation the typical round tube PVT units, the tube heat exchangers are oriented under the photovoltaic cells in the thermal collector layer, reducing the thickness of the layers between the PV cells and the heat exchanger should improve the heat transfer between these layers, maximizing the heat exchanger exchange from the PV layer to the thermal collector layer will increase the efficiency of our PVT unit. The setup of the panel is seven layers with glass, EVA plastic, photovoltaic cells, polyethylene nanofibers, adhesive Tedlar, heat exchange, and a heat exchanger surrounded by insulation. 
reducing the resistances of the PV system by substituting the polyethylene nanofibers in the fourth layer in place of the high density polyethylene would increase this. <clears throat> if you'll recall from our initial problem identification, one of the issues with PVT systems is that they tend to retain quite a bit of heat. Uh, by the conservation of energy, we know that um, heat is not going to be, or our energy isn't going to be created or destroyed. It's either going to leave the system or it's going to stay in the system. And our goal in uh, order to maximize the efficiency of our system is to use as much of that heat as possible and turn that into work uh, usable energy for work. The way that we've decided to go about doing this, as was previously stated, is to replace one of the layers in our PVT system with a more efficient thermal, uh, a more efficient layer with a higher thermal conductivity. What we're going to do in this case is to utilize a highly thermal conductive polyethylene nanofibers. These were discovered in 2010 in MIT's Department of Mechanical Engineering in the lab of Dr. Gang Chen. This was done through a special process of drawing polyethylene fibers out in a specific way that causes them, instead of going in their typical um, messy configuration, as you can see in the first picture of our graphic, to more of a linear situation, as you can see in the second picture of our graphic. This gives the polyethylene nanofibers very interesting material properties. And what we are most concerned with is the fact that this drives their thermal conductivity from the order of about 0.1 watts per meter Kelvin up to 104 watts per meter Kelvin, making it a much more effective heat spreader in one direction. This will increase, or this will decrease our thermal resistance between the photovoltaic cell layer and the heat exchanger layer, causing more of the heat to be transferred between these two, which will lower the temperature of our photovoltaic cell, making it more efficient at converting sunlight into electricity. And it will drive more heat toward the heat exchanger, which will warm whatever fluid is passing through that heat exchanger, allowing it to do more work further on. This will maximize the heat that is used into workable energy for our system. <clears throat> Going in line with this, we have a few equations here related to thermal resistance. And as a proof of concept, we've made the assumption that we have a PVT system that has an area of one meter squared. And we have assigned certain thicknesses to each of our seven layers and appropriate thermal conductivities found from various sources. And using our equations as listed here related to thermal resistance, we were able to calculate the thermal resistance based on our assumptions of each of these layers. <clears throat> Since these layers would be in series for our system, we can add the thermal resistances to give us a total thermal resistance for our PV layer, which will be the layers of our system related to the photovoltaic cell. As you can see at the bottom there, we have our total thermal resistances tallied up. And for this system in which we use the polyethylene nanofiber layer, it has a much lower thermal resistance of 0 0.006954 watts per meters Kelvin when compared to using a more traditional high density polyethylene layer which, has a thermal, which would give our total thermal resistance to be 0 0.012925 watts per meters Kelvin. This lower thermal resistance in the case of our polyethylene nanofiber layer, as was previously stated, will allow more heat to be transferred between the PV layer, which needs to be cooler to be efficient, to the heat exchanger, which needs to be warmer to be efficient. Utilizing the thermal resistances that were previously tabulated in the last slide, we have a diagram of what we would propose to be our uh, theoretical setup for this PVT um, system. <clears throat> and as you can see, the temperature differences on the uh, left and right have to do with the changing out our fourth layer, as we have stated. The left side has the nanofiber polyethylene in its fourth layer. The right side has the high density polyethylene fourth layer. And while it seems that the temperature differences may be quite modest between these two, uh, over the lifespan of a PVT system, which could be up to 30 years as some estimates go, running annually, this would make a large difference in the efficiency and the overall energy produced. Every degree that is saved means that our PV cell is more efficient at converting sunlight to electricity and our heat exchanger is able to carry more heat with it to do work further down the line. So keeping in mind the temperatures that were achieved at the base of our PV layer, we get to the thermal collector portion of our PVT cell, which involves a heat exchanger. <coughs> so making a few assumptions, such as our 
uh, this being at steady state, one dimensional heat transfer and no generation, we're able to use the heat diffusion equation for a cylindrical system and reduce that down by getting rid of our generation term, our accumulation term, and all directions but the radius uh, of our system. Looking at our thermal conductivities for the polyethylene nanofiber at 104 watts per meters Kelvin and the high density polyethylene <coughs> for 0 0.5 watts per meter Kelvin, and keeping in mind the temperatures that we start at, uh, we would be able to deduce that our temperature would be quite a bit higher in the case of our polyethylene nanofiber being used versus the high density polyethylene, which again translates to more heat going to where we need it to go, away from the PV cell and towards the heat exchange layer, making for a more efficient PVT cell. Some other aspects we can do to increase efficiency would be to put the heat exchangers running alongside or in between the photovoltaic cells themselves. The photovoltaic cells can also be coated with chemicals like nitride or titanium dioxide to make the chemical or to make the cells less reflective, therefore absorbing more of the energy from the sun. Some of the limitations of the prototype would be that we assumed 1D heat transfer to get our proof of concept, the, and that a typical PVT assembly consists of multiple PV cells. When we reduced our system down to one cell, introducing possible issues with expanding our unit to multiple cells. The process itself would, or the process for producing polyethylene nanofibers can be costly and expensive, which may not make it a viable option for widespread commercial use at this time. And there is also construction errors that could occur by inverting the polyethylene nanofiber layer. Um, so one of the things that we were tasked with in this project was to relate our um, innovation to a biomimicry concept. One of the things that we found interesting was the fact that polar bears and the way that they insulate themselves for the cold, harsh Arctic climate. There, as you can see by our graphic, the top layer of guard fur is long and transparent with a dense layer of under fur. This allows solar radiation to pass, or light, to pass through the guard fur and down to the dense under fur, warming the bear, while the guard hair, even though it's transparent, allows us to pass through, insulates extremely well. This is analogous to our polyethylene layer that we use um, underneath our PV cell layer in our system. It allows for very good heat um, conduction in one direction, but it insulates well in the other direction. We believe that this would increase the efficiency of our PVT um, cell, allowing heat to go where it needs to go, just like it does in the case of the polar bear, which keeps them alive through the cold winters. These are some of our references that we use to complete this project. Thank you and have a great day.